We're here at the Range Cow Research Center with Dr. Dave Lawman, our Extension Beef Cattle Specialist. And, and Dave, over the years, we've met up out here to, to talk about some of the research underway. Why don't you kind of give us an overview of a, a couple of studies that, that you and the crew and the students are working on out here? Sure. <clears throat> so, you know, we've made some progress, I think, since the last time you were out. And uh, we've been studying uh, cattle that are efficient utilizing forage. I mean, that's the bottom line. You know, ruminants have a special place in the world because they're really good at converting what winds up being sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water into a high quality human edible food product. And so we're trying to find animals that are better at that, meaning, you know, obviously the photosynthesis allows plants to grow and ruminant animals can utilize those plants. Uh, so we've, we've got some neat data over the last couple of years where we've tested contemporary groups of both heifers and cows. And we, we do see uh, tremendous variability in not only forage intake, but also animal performance. So there's two studies we want to talk about. Briefly tell us about the first one and what that, how that's set up and kind of what some of your initial observations are. Yeah, so uh, Emma Briggs is a recent uh, graduate, PhD graduate student. She's now on the faculty at Kansas State University. But Emma did a really neat study where she tested three groups of heifers, one group each year. And so she had a set of 55 replacement heifers last year um, and in this group of replacement heifers, again, you see tremendous variation among those heifers in forage intake and average daily gain. Um, in, in this set of heifers, the example I thought I would share, Lindola, there's one heifer that's consuming 17 pounds of hay a day on average over about a 70-day period after a 21-day adaptation period, so long period of time. Uh, but this heifer is consuming 17 pounds, which is about the group average, okay? But she's gaining 1.4 pounds a day, consuming nothing but grass, hay, and mineral. Uh, another heifer in that group is also consuming 17 pounds of hay a day, and she's losing weight. <laughs> so, tremendous difference and we think that the heifer that can gain a lot of weight and still not eat very much forage is going to be an efficient cow. So talk about the second study and kind of how that what you're looking at there it's involving it's involving milking from time to time right? Absolutely so we also not only do we test a group of heifers each year over a long period of time, we also test a group of gestating cows each year and then a group of lactating cows. So just another example, uh, one group, uh, Sam Talley, a master's student, just tested here this last winter, a group of contemporaries, and we found uh, one cow in that group. And, and yes, we do milk those cows about every three weeks. And so we know how much milk they're producing and we know the chemical content of the milk, you know, protein, fat, and so on. Anyway, in this group of cows, we, we found one cow that is not producing a lot of milk. She's actually losing weight, consuming hay and mineral, uh, but she's eating a lot. So it doesn't get a lot worse than that, right? She's not, she's not a very efficient cow. In the same group, there's another cow that is producing a lot of milk, far above the group average. Uh, she's gaining weight. And so, you know, if you think about that, producing a lot of milk, consuming hay, and gaining weight at the same time, that's a big deal. And she's eating about, as I recall, about six pounds below the group average in hay intake. So she's not eating a lot and she's very productive. I mean, it, and it, it doesn't get much better than that. So this is very specific research, a lot involved in, in the structure of it and all the things that you all observe over a long period of time. Yep. How does this translate to average producers? What, right, what are the takeaways at this stage 
um, and kind of some of the best practices to keep in mind in general for your herd? Yeah, so our goal is to, and that's one of our big objectives and, and things we work on every day, is finding a method to identify those differences in forage utilization efficiency in animals without having to go through an expensive and labor intensive test like we're doing here. That's our job is to figure out ways to, you know, identify uh, animals like that to make, you know, make agriculture more efficient. One of your very successful programs over the years has been the L Ranchers Lunchtime Series. Uh, we've heard a lot about that, but you have a special edition coming out that our viewers may be interested in. Tell us about that. Sure. We do. Uh, on October 10th, we are going to have the opportunity, you know, uh, if, if everything goes well, we'll have the opportunity to interview uh, a legendary pr livestock producer, and that is uh, Mrs. Minnie Lou Bradley. Uh, she is 93 years old this year. And uh, I contacted her and asked her if she would mind if we shared some of her history and just uh, absolute legendary accomplishments uh, through our Rancher's Thursday Lunchtime Series. And she's pretty excited about doing that. And she, of course, is a, a trailblazer for OSU. Absolutely. Uh, first woman to do a lot of things and, yep. and really be great to have a conversation with her. So, yeah. We look forward to that, Dave. Yes, thank you. Well, thanks for having us, having us out to the North Range today. It's a, it's a beautiful morning to, to talk about our favorite subject. Yes, I agree. <laughs> thanks a lot, Dave. Thank you. And for information on the upcoming Ranchers Lunchtime Series with Minnie Lou Bradley, go to sunup.okstate.edu.